you share that? Abyssal dogs. Ah. <laughs> was, oh. the, was the rift just large enough for a creature like that to come through, or was it larger? Uh, it looked like, a, at the moment, it looked like a creature that size can maybe squeeze through, but you also saw it kind of begin to expand as the creature began to draw near, so it may have had some level of flexibility. So not like something else came through before. Well, I mean, Fucking I don't know. These things can happen. Really? Have ah, ah, ah. I'll walk over to the first demon dog, I'll take the falchion, and I'll cut the stinger off the, the tail okay. and hand it over to Caduceus and go, like, shouldn't we uh, maybe hold on to these for something? Uh, well, we talked to Nod about that. That's not a terrible idea. I mean, they're really venomous and poisonous. Is there Knock any, on is, some doors? Is there, is there anybody? Do we see anybody? Make, make a perception check. Bell or? <laughs> 12. Uh, 12. Uh, you both look into each side of the door. There is what looks to be a braided cord that hangs about 10 feet from what looks to be a bell flanking each side of the door on the inside. There's two different doors, two different bells? Correct. We just Any remember? markings on? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Worth every moment. A moment passes before one door kind of opens up, and stepping inside, you see what looks to be a human, um, a uh, a man probably in his mid forties or so, uh, big, big, bushy beard that kind of falls down to his mid chest. Uh, hair that is gris greased and slicked back into a very, very tight ponytail, it seems, that then releases into a bunch of billowing curls that go to about his mid-back. Uh, he is wearing uh, dark gray silver robes and what looks to be uh, bright, shiny little uh, pins that kind of mark where the clavicle and the shoulder meet. As he kind of peeks through and goes, can I help you? The other door opens and you see what looks to be uh, a, a drow girl, young, maybe late teens, early 20s, uh, bright silver white hair that is pulled into like a high ponytail and then two tendrils that go past the front of the ears and dangle down to about uh, mid chest. Um, beautiful, solid kind of gray blue skin, uh, almost uh, amber colored eyes as she peeks through wearing a similar robe as to him. Hello? Uh, we're looking for Lady Zethris. Is, is, one of, is one of you, I don't want to presume. The man kind of <laughs> closes the door, <laughs> and uh, the girl walks out. And if I might ask, what is the reason for the meet? Well, the Sunbreaker told us to come over here because he said maybe that you guys had some like work for us, but at the same time, we were supposed to come tell you about this stuff that we found here. We're an investigative duo. Mm. We're known as Django and Nash, and we go around finding things and... Um, really we, important things. We found something that you might be interested in. All right, um, please wait patiently. I will let the lady know. Oh, you're not the lady? No. Oh. Closes the door. <laughs> Good pitch. Good pitch. I thought she was a lady. Yeah. She is a lady. Yeah. We're going sure. to tell them about the rift, right? <clears throat> if, it, if it suits our, our, our purposes. What else are we going Literally. to tell them? I don't know, honestly. I Eventually don't know the door here. opens and she returns and goes, please, uh, if you would not mind, come with me. Sure, yes, of course. Sure, we do this yeah, sort of thing yeah, all the yeah. Time. Inside yeah. check. Make an inside check. Have you ever killed one half of a table before, Matt? <laughs> uh, yeah. 21. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm gonna die! We're gonna die, we're gonna die! We're gonna die! Oh, oh, she's a monster in a girl's shell! Guys, D&D oh, &D Beyond has a ferocious race for president of D&D. Who's gonna up? The only the way that you can vote is to subscribe. That's not true. <laughs> 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 All right. <clears throat> You follow suit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, leading you through the door, uh, the next is the chamber. It looks like there are maybe two parallel hallways. Because um, you see where would be the left, where the other door had opened, there is a long, heavy stone wall that divides it. So this, this, this chamber seems to be divided into two sides. Um, heading down this way, uh, you pass a closed door on the right, a second closed door on the right, a third closed door on the right, and, along, and each door has a guard there. Um, the guards are wearing 
what looks to be mantles that are similar to the uh, or of, of the same design as the Korean armor and kind of the mantle you saw on the Minotaur? the mage that you fought uh, when you first came to Jorhas. Like, mm. um, but that but it's just the mantle and it's adorning what looks to be the simple the simple kind of silver gray robes that the other figures in this uh, building seem to be wearing. Uh, the interior is beautiful. Um, all the stonework, uh, whereas had kind of a um, somewhat plain exterior, aside from the general shape and curvature of the edges of the building, the interior walls here have uh, beautiful scroll work kind of chiseled into all the stone. Each doorway frame, it has kind of this uh, almost an, an ivy type texture that curls and swirls around the door frame. A lot of, a lot of effort and work has gone into the construction of this building. Um, you go past the third door, and the woman goes and opens the chamber doorway, kind of nods and gives you a nudge to enter. We do. Okay. Into the room. The first thing you're met with is two drow warriors, um, both adorned in armor, but the armor itself is clean, well-kept, uh, possibly ceremonial, or at least has not been used in battle for a while. They both just kind of look at you both and step aside. Um, beyond that, you see what looks to be a beautiful, tall, high-back lounge chair um, that extends out with this deep, reddish, purple hue, like a velvet. The rim on the outside that curls around it also beautifully done in, in kind of a brass color that spirals on the edges. Um, you can see what looks to be a small altar in the center of the chamber, about three feet from the foot of this. And this altar kind of heads up in this slow, gradual uh, spiraling point, almost like there are two paths of a, a tapering tower. And at the top, you see what looks to be a, uh, a brass dodecahedron. Um, just, look everywhere just, just hollow, that. hollow. It's, it's, it, there's nothing inside, but it's, it's a, it's, it's an art piece. <laughs> okay. Um, in the chair, you see, sitting in, uh, in, incredible, detailed, uh, brocades, and, and inlaid into this, this silk robe that drifts past her legs to the point where you cannot see her feet, just dangling and rolling off the edge of the chair. Uh, this beautiful. Uh, dark elf woman, uh, her skin almost a, a soft violet hue, uh, her hair uh, bright white uh, that seems to taper to a similar purple violet color as to her skin as it goes past her shoulders. Her hair is long, it goes past her hips and kind of tumbles off the edges of the, of the chair. Uh, you see as she sits kind of towards the, the edge of the chair, just looking towards uh, her face, towards this art piece, her eyes closed and her hand raises up and just kind of asks you to enter silently. Mm -hmm. Just wait till she talks, I guess? We'll wait till she, like, yeah, she'll 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 start the convo. Well, she gestures for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Enter. Um, the two uh, queen soldiers close the door and just stay there watching. They're not leaving you alone in the chamber. <clears throat> her eyes open and looks towards you, and her her irises are a, a a pure, vibrant amethyst purple. Um, it's it's entrancing, even just to see the color. Even this low light, it almost seems to be backlit. The way the color comes at you. Her face seems gentle and comes to a smile. So, I have been told that you are investigators. This is correct. Yes, we are. Uh, we're detectives. You came at the behest of uh, the Sunbreaker? Well, he mm -hmm. told us about you. He didn't, um, didn't, yeah. didn't say we you must to, go there. We had to, but he was like, you know, you should probably go see her, because she's pretty cool. And he wasn't lying, man. You are super cool. Right. <laughs> well, uh, are you coming seeking work? Maybe, awesome. maybe we were we were interested in um, in possibly sharing some information with mm -hmm. you. We found something that I think you would like to know. Please do tell me. Um, 
Is this going to tell him? Yeah, then? sure, sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. We were on another case. Mm -hmm. Another case. Can't get into the details yeah. of it. Super hush hush. We like to keep our we, client NBA's, list yes. private. <laughs> yeah. But we were on another case, and we stumbled upon a bit of a a bit of a rifty. Yeah, it was like, you know, like a a doorway to another dimension. It was very flexible. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to another dimension. Mm -hmm. Sort of could, it could expand ben. to it, accept any shape that sort of wanted oh. to enter it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the interesting part, Don't that wasn't the interesting that. part. No, 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 that is, you know, normal. The interesting part was that this, this passageway mm. letting creatures from another dimension um, evil an evil dimension yeah some no, some call it the abyss or something they were yeah. definitely <laughs> fiends you know that came through and there were multiple ones and they were i mean they were scary right in your hometown they here right here uh, right under the ground 200 yards away from here they we were like we were like that's crazy, but right away we were like, we gotta go tell Lady Z. 